back here after the trailer from uh, Shadowland, the legend. the legend, and we're here with uh, the f the filmmaker and Johanna Kern. And Johanna, so uh, I mean, I saw some of your other uh, stuff you were doing. So you, you you actually direct? Did you direct that as well? Yes. And you wrote it? Yes. And I don't know what produced. else produced everything, yes. right? Yes. So uh, well that's that's awesome. I mean, it, I I no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where to start, but I get the impression that um, that this is kind of a story that's been with you for a long time. That it's like you, you really have been working a long time to get this story out there. Is that? Oh yes, accurate? that is true. Actually, this is the first uh, feature film uh, of series of four features, and the next one is um, in the development stages. The script has been written. Uh, they're not sequels; they're just parts of the entire story of Shadowland. Shadowland the Legend um, has been first um, conceptualized, let's put it this way, in 2001. And it was based on my um, musical uh, stage play called Frank, Big Baba and 40 Thieves. Sorry, wh oh, what, what? Say that again. <laughs> Frank, Frank Big, Big Baba and 40 Thieves. There were about 300 performances on stage um, in that musical and 200, over 200 of them were actually dancers. Um, the shadows were played by dancers on the stage, and they are played by martial artists in the movie. Wow, that's wow, pretty. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, that's <laughs> a huge musical to be <laughs> yes, performing yes, with two hundred. Yes, it was. It was. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was done in Mississauga, and uh, a lot of the actors were actually uh, students of my um, acting school, uh, which then was running in Mississauga, and we had over a hundred students each semester. It was. It was mm. quite a nice. Wow. Um, adventure. Where yes. did you find a stage big enough to, uh, <laughs> to put on? Oh, they are all over the place. You just need to look for them. Okay. Yeah. Yes. All right. Now, um, you know, I had the chance to go over the kind of the synopsis of the story here. And it almost sounds like it's got, uh, you know, there's elements of conspiracy and uh, elite powers and... Yes, yes. Well, Shadowland can happen everywhere and it's actually happening everywhere. We all experience it on many levels. We all have either personal shadows or um, global shadows, so you name it. Um, the dark side of our nature is the most beautiful side to explore. The most beautiful side? To explore. To explore. Yes. And unify, perhaps, and attach, we bring light to uh, understanding. Well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not here to save the world, to be honest with you. I think ah. the world is, go, is, is doing great. But I think, uh, as a filmmaker, I have the responsibility to, to focus on topics that are exciting to me, and shadows are, mm. definitely. Interesting. Mm. Okay, so um, let's talk about the uh, the making of the film. It's just you just finished it, right? Yes, <coughs> last month. <laughs> and I <coughs> saw a clip uh, that you sent me. Uh, the trailer. Oh. Well, no, well, another oh, one. Oh, that was, okay. uh, maybe it was okay. from City TV or something. Where it was for City TV. Yes. And you were at U of T. It looked like, and uh, shadows were coming out of the windows, and you yes. were talking about yes, that's making true. the film. Um, well, we had a lot of publicity during shooting of the film, which was several years ago. Actually, it took several years to complete it because it is a very unusual production for Canada. Um, there has haven't been, and still there are none. Uh, fans or uh, uh, support for fantasy films. This is not a popular genre. In uh, Canada. Among the, yeah, in Canada, among the government um, uh, financiers. So the film was financed completely privately and it took a long time to pull it off because um, it is a very big production and mm -hmm. the visual effects are very substantial. About 30% of the movie is actually uh, consists of visual effects. Uh, we had a I think over 300 people performing in the movie again. I like big shows, I'm sorry, I just like big shows. So Johanna, <laughs> the, the <laughs> fantasy genre, sci-fi genre, you know, that would include you know, Star Wars, you know, Harry Potter. Yes, that's, that's so the like genre. Th and th that's yeah. a huge. It's a huge yeah. genre. It's actually the most popular genre in the world of all times. Uh, I think it's 19, 18 or 19, I think it's 19 most popular films of all times and making uh, the most money are in fantasy family or science fiction genre. And yet um, the government funds in Canada do not consider commercial, commercial meaning popular, entertaining and broadly viewed by audiences films to be eligible for any um, in, um, um, investment from, from government. So 
-hmm. Therefore, we had to look for a private investors to to uh, pull off the movie. Yes. Now, is this the first film that you've made? Oh no, <laughs> no. I I produced two features before. They were rather small Canadian features. This is my first uh, feature movie as a director, but I um, directed, produced, written several short films. They being in the international festival circuits, and some of them did very well. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's, it's just my first feature as a director, but uh, right that's now, all. how did you find that? Uh, how did role I find uh, of, of being a director? Because well, as, as I said, I directed time. before, even feature film director. Yeah, the first time feature film director. Well, I've had a lot of experience with short films and other projects, um, numerous other projects. So um, I don't know. It was the same. But let's say, uh, don't laugh at me, but it was just longer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> just being longer on the set for for a project that's all um fascinating adventure i can't wait to make more of the series and other mm -hmm. features as well mm -hmm. i love making films and i'm here to mm -hmm. to share with you what we all can pull together and mm -hmm. i hope you enjoy it and if you don't send me an email and we'll talk about it beautiful how do you feel you grew through as as a result of being a director and producing shadowlands oh <laughs> That's a very interesting question. Uh, given that the film took, sev took several years to complete, yes. it was an incredible adventure to live in a country that has no um, immediate or available funds for, for this genre, because um, Canadian, as I said, um, government funds are sponsoring just the art cinema, not the commercial one. Uh, I had to come up with all sorts of ideas how to uh, bring on board uh, top professionals to, um, to complete the post-production, and that included a very famous uh, music composer and the leader of a rock band in Europe, uh, sort of equivalent of Rolling Stones, only they are based in Eastern Europe, uh, over 250 hit songs, etc., and we have a music score of the length of uh, 80 minutes ready mm -hmm. to be released later on. We mm. had wonderful company uh, coming on board for visual effects and, and um, mastering and online editing optics, digital pictures of Toronto. Uh, absolutely wonderful cameraman and cinematographer Mitchell Zainali, who worked for Sony, for Warner Brothers before. Um, we just managed to, to get on board the top professionals at a not so high budget, let's say, and um, and there I say we've done the impossible. I've, um, I used to run a, a film festival for science fiction and fantasy in Toronto for a few years, and it's sort of under development, changing its format now. Hopefully in a year we will bring it back to the public in a different, a little bit different format, which I cannot reveal. Um, and um, so I've seen um, thousands of uh, fantasy and science fiction films from all over the world made on low budgets and um, dare I say I've never seen a production like this. Mm -hmm. It is sort of like in between independent uh, films of that genre and the big studio films somewhere in the middle middle road. Um, yes, we've, we've pulled out the impossible and I'm very proud of all of you who work on the film and that'll be like over 500 people, including the actors and crew in post-production. I'm very, very proud of you. Yes, we've done 500, that's great. Now, uh, yeah, so we're really looking forward to seeing the film, but I is this your genre, would you I, say? Yes, it's my main genre, yes, yes. I love the genre. I've been in this genre for a long time, and um, although uh, my short films were not <coughs> all of them were in that genre, I love drama too, but this is my main genre. It is a genre that lets people open the minds mm -hmm. and uh, the impossible is possible and we can dream through that genre, we can fulfill ourselves by identifying with, uh, identifying with the characters on the screen and the genre basically tells us more about ourselves and life than <coughs> other genres because there is no stop being put, there is no red flag. Yeah. In this genre we can tell anything we want you because it's all fantasy. Right. But when you look at sci -fi, the, the genre of sci-fi, and yes. Uh, I'm, yes, I'm I, I love it too. I have a script for sci-fi that's ready to go, by okay. the way, and I want to do well it too. Well, you know, because there is a little bit of a, um, it's hard to say where the sci-fi genre and the fantasy genre yes. 
uh, separate, right? Oh, it's it's actually uh, yes. It's it's not so easy to say. And, and if I may explain, um, they sort of come from the same root. However, the sci-fi genre focuses more on the uh, technology, mm -hmm. and uh, the technology resolves the issues, and 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 the merit of the film is. Um, the resolution of whatever conflict and plot comes through the technology. Mm -hmm. Whether, wh wh where, uh, while in fantasy it is uh, more of a magic, more of the spiritual, more of the supernatural. Although those two genres very often share the supernatural, and that's then it's very difficult to tell where they mm -hmm. fall into which category. So they sort of blend on in many levels. True. You're yeah. Right. yeah. Uh, well, I'm, it's interesting that you should say that because if it if for sci-fi it's technology that's yes. the, sort of the uh, the, 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 the driving dot. power. And yeah. uh, yes. And and for fantasy, it's the um, the impossible happens on its own. There's no technology involved. Right. So you have a lot of subgenres in fantasy. That'd be the sword. That'd be the sp uh, supernatural. That would be the magic, etc. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, w one thing I've noticed with sci-fi, and uh, maybe this question's not really applicable, No, it is, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm fascinated with both genres, and I intend to produce uh, many more movies in both genres. So. It seems to me that in sci-fi and, uh, or slash fantasy, in when it first came out as a genre, yes. or when it, hit, when, it, when it was in its heyday, because I think sci-fi has really declined in the sense that uh, it, what there was a heyday, I think, probably in the 50s, 60s, okay. yes. where the you know this technological view of the of the world was very optimistic yes and, and that's kind of um, it's almost like sci-fi doesn't know what to say anymore it doesn't know it's hard Ooh. And, yes and uh, yes so do you remember matrix yeah ah. they didn't know what to say um, yes uh, because um, let's say um, the technology and the science got separated from philosophy many centuries ago and many centuries ago they used to be one mm -hmm. it was just one knowledge called philosophy and that mm -hmm. included science mm -hmm. ever since that was um, dissociated from from the human being from human powers from human mind which is the most powerful thing there is to the consciousness then um, then technology on its own can go only thus far. However, nowadays there's a lot of um, uh, discoveries and a lot of research that has been conducted for years, and now scientists are coming to a similar conclusion as might be fi find in some fantasy films, mm -hmm. which is uh, mind reading, telepathy. It's been now scientifically proven as just a normal human being ability that we can develop. There are some articles that could be researched on the internet. Uh, we can see um, a quantum levitation recently. Um, th there is a new technology, nanotechnology, in, uh, which uh, teaches us about how in about 20 years our world will be completely different. And um, so, so the science is catching up now. It's sort of coming back to, uh, to the root, to the philosophy, mm -hmm. which philosophy is not just fantasizing and logicking and having a, a point of view on life and, and our experience here. So philosophy is about a deeper uh, understanding of our role in our life with the others within the universe and how far we can go and what we can develop. So I uh, um, encourage everyone to, to look for the recent news in nanotechnology and, and, and science and, and you find a lot to, to, um, to include in the sci-fi movies if you want to produce or, or make one. Uh, um, I, I used to actually um, produce and, and um, I developed a show uh, latest news from uh, nanotechnology and medicine and, and science and that was a weekly show we had a half an hour show and oh boy what I've learned what is possible that's unbelievable <coughs> it's just we need to bring together technology and science with understanding of human power and capacity and mind and then we're back on track but are we ever going to do that? I mean, I'm just thinking. Oh, I believe we are. Y you think? Like oh, the, yeah. Like the ethical approach to decisions around technology? Hey, uh, that is something else. But you know, we're all responsible for ourselves, yeah. for our individual life. And, um, and in context of being 
a human race if we start noticing that that we all sort of one as a human race and at the same time we individually will take responsibility for ourselves then and I think we're on its way. I'm very optimistic about it. Really? Especially the younger generation. Of course, they watch a lot of fantasy films, and so, and they very well educated. And all the fantasy films really address all of our hopes and our fears. They do. Don't they? They and, do. And, and, you they know, in do. Shadowlands, it's looking at shadows. Yes. And things that we're not accustomed yes. to or maybe afraid to yes. look at. Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, so what's uh, the journey of Shadowlands in, in, in a nutshell for us? Okay, uh, the, the future. All right, so um, as <coughs> I said, it took several years to complete uh, yeah. the post-production. The film <coughs> is completed now. It's, it's ready for distribution. We are beginning to get some um, recognition and interest from, from distributors right now. It might take a while. And definitely we will go with uh, the distribution company that can do the most for the film. Mm -hmm. And so everybody is welcome to contact me at After Rain Films. You can go to our website, uh, www.shadowlandthelegend.com. See our trailer on YouTube and we can talk and I'll give you more details. Because on camera right now, I'm not supposed to reveal too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because the film's brand new. I'm just going to hold this up. That's the, uh, the, the <coughs> DVD case. And uh, do we have the poster of the, uh, there's a poster, right? Yes, we, we should uh, have it here. We, there we go. Ah. That looks great. And um, coming to a distribution outlet near you in, in the very near future. <laughs> yes, yes. Now, are we going to get a ch I, I don't know if you want to hear this question, but are we going to get a chance to see it in a theater? Hopefully, it depends on the country. Each country has a different um, uh, demands on uh, how they can promote the film. Theatrical distribution comes with a lot of uh, money for the promotion. It, it, it goes into millions. So not each country will be um, capable to, to pull it off. Uh, there are no huge stars in the movie, though in the genre, the fantasy family genre, we really don't need huge stars. And also, films usually make more money on DVDs. Mm -hmm. and yeah, so, so we'll see. I, hopefully, it'll be in theaters because the experience of a film uh, on a huge screen in an intimacy of the dark room, sharing it with other people is, is un uncompatible with any other experience. You so need the popcorn and the it. golden topping. Yes, so, so I only hope <laughs> that we'll see that um, and brace film yourself <laughs> for <the fear laughs> in theaters moments. in Canada. But we'll see what happens. It's an interesting journey and whatever, whatever happens, it's, it's going to be great. And, um, and I wish you a very good experience with it. And I encourage you all to, to follow your dreams because it always pays off this way or another. When you follow your dreams, you're fulfilling your life. And um, that, that makes you even happier than you were before. That's awesome. Thank you for following your dreams. Yeah. Thank you very manifesting much. Manifesting. Thank you. Thank you. You guys today. are awesome. Good luck to all of you. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Thank Johanna. You. So people can go to shadowlandthelegend.com. Shadowlandthelegend.com or look for Shadowland The Legend trailer on YouTube. Right. And, and we. Uh, and you're welcome to contact us. Uh, there is an email address on our website. Please don't send anything to the mailing address that, because it doesn't make any sense. Rather contact us at afterrainfilms at gmail.com. Fantastic. Perfect.